Isla-class battleship, the ghost that won the Pacific. Raw, heavy metal dominance. But now, imagine that legendary battleship reborn with a high-energy laser cannon that neutralizes threats for roughly $1 a shot. This is the BBG-1 Defiant-class battleship. While the world's focus was elsewhere, a massive maritime shift occurred. China built the world's largest navy, boasting 230 times the shipbuilding capacity of the United States. But the Golden Fleet Initiative is the American answer. We aren't just building ships. We're building 25 capital-scale platforms designed to restore long-term U.S. maritime dominance and re-establish the balance of power on the high seas. The weight, 40,000 tons of sheer intimidation. The punch, an electric railgun hitting 5,600 miles per hour and Mach 7 hypersonic missiles designed to challenge existing defense systems that were once thought to be impenetrable. The return. For the first time since the Cold War, we are reintroducing surface-based strategic deterrence. This is the 21st century evolution of Teddy Roosevelt's Great White Fleet, fully AI integrated and designed to penetrate defenses previously considered extremely difficult to counter. But amongst the experts, the knives are out. Naval traditionalists call it the Great White Fleet for a new era of global competition. Critics call it something else entirely. They call it a $15 billion high-value target. In an age of satellites, hypersonic missiles, AI-guided drones, and so-called carrier-killer weapons designed to sink large ships from thousands of miles away, is a giant battleship the ultimate deterrent or a floating bullseye? Tonight, we're not just explaining what this ship is. We're answering the only question that matters. Will the Defiant-class battleship be America's greatest naval asset or the most dangerous target ever put to sea. The United States Navy is preparing to do something it has not done since 1944. It is planning to build a brand new class of heavy battleships. Not destroyers, not cruisers, actual capital class surface warships. They are known as the Defiant class battleships. And the first hole already has a name, USS Defiant, designation BBG-1. These ships are projected to displace between 30,000 and 40,000 tons. For perspective, the most advanced surface combatant currently in service, the Arleigh Burke-class destroyer, displaces just under 10,000 tons. That means the BBG-1 is three to four times heavier than the backbone of today's U.S. Navy. And that single fact is why this program has exploded into controversy. Modern naval warfare is built around one unforgiving reality. Big ships are easier to detect, easier to track, and easier to target. Regional competitors have structured their entire maritime strategy around exploiting that reality. Today, the People's Liberation Army Navy operates the largest navy in the world by whole count. By 2027, it is projected to field more missile launch cells than the entire U.S. Navy combined, across ships, submarines, mobile truck launchers, and fixed land installations. There has also been heavy investment in long-range anti-ship weapons, including ballistic missiles designed specifically to strike large surface vessels at extreme distances. These systems, often referred to as A2-AD weapons, exist for one reason — to destroy high-value American naval assets before they can influence a fight. This is why critics look at the Defiant class and don't see a warship. They see a highly visible target. Each hole could cost up to $15 billion, placing it in the same price category as a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier. Crew estimates reach 850 sailors, at a time when the Navy is already struggling to man the ships it has. Lose one in combat, and you're not just losing steel, you're losing people, money, prestige, and strategic leverage, all in a single strike. On paper, the argument against the BBG-1 sounds airtight, but supporters argue it rests on a false assumption. That assumption is this, that the Defiant class is designed to survive by being attacked. It isn't. The ship is built around a completely different concept, one US strategists describe as disabling the archer instead of intercepting the arrows. Modern navies spend enormous sums reacting to incoming threats. A single surface-to-air interceptor can cost anywhere from $2 million to over $20 million. Over the last year alone, the US Navy fired more air defense missiles than it did in the previous three decades combined. That rate of expenditure is not sustainable. The Defiant class flips the entire equation. Instead of waiting for missiles to launch and then trying to stop them, the ship is designed to eliminate the launchers themselves, along with the radar systems, command nodes, and air defense networks that enable them. 
That mission begins with hypersonic strike capability. Each Golden Fleet battleship is expected to carry 12 conventional prompt strike missiles. These weapons launch like ballistic missiles, then release a hypersonic glide vehicle traveling at Mach 7 to Mach 8. At those velocities, interception becomes extraordinarily difficult. More importantly, these weapons can strike targets from thousands of kilometers away. That distance changes everything. It means the USS Defiant does not need to approach hostile coastlines. It does not need to enter anti-ship missile envelopes. It can operate beyond the effective reach of systems designed to destroy it. Supporters argue this fundamentally reframes survivability. A ship that can strike first, from extreme range, is not waiting to be attacked. It is actively degrading the adversary's ability to attack at all. But hypersonics alone don't solve the most dangerous problem in modern naval warfare. Because real combat doesn't come in single launches. It comes in swarms, cheap drones, loitering munitions, low-cost cruise missiles fired in massive numbers to overwhelm defenses. This is where the US Navy has been bleeding money. Millions of dollars spent intercepting weapons that cost thousands. A brutal cost imbalance. And it's happening right now. This is where the Defiant class introduces its most disruptive feature, directed energy weapons. Instead of relying solely on missile interceptors, the ship's defensive core shifts to high-power laser systems. Platforms like Helios, operating in the 300 to 600 kilowatt range, convert raw electrical power directly into defensive fire. They engage at the speed of light. A single laser shot costs between $1 and $10. There is no reload, no magazine, no depletion, only available power. Instead of spending millions to destroy a cheap drone, the BBG-1 disables it in flight for pocket change. Instead of withdrawing to rearm, the ship stays in the fight. The Helio system alone can blind sensors, disrupt electronics, or heat the skin of a cruise missile until it fails from six miles away. At higher power levels, lasers restore something modern navies are rapidly losing, endurance. They also provide control. Lasers offer graduated responses, dazzle instead of destroy, disable instead of escalate. They allow operations in gray zone conflicts without firing a single explosive weapon. And lasers are only one layer. The Defiant class is also planned to mount an electromagnetic railgun rated at approximately 32 megajoules. No gunpowder, no explosive warhead, just kinetic energy. Using electromagnetic force, the railgun accelerates a projectile to roughly 5,600 miles per hour, striking targets more than 100 nautical miles away. Cheaper per shot than missiles, harder to intercept, ideal for sustained engagements. Together, Hypersonics, lasers, and railguns create a layered combat system unmatched by any surface ship in history. All of it is powered by one thing the Defiant class has more of than any surface combatant before it, electricity. And electricity enables the final pillar of survivability, artificial intelligence. Modern naval combat unfolds too quickly for human reaction alone. The BBG-1 integrates AI-driven sensor fusion, threat detection, target prioritization, and defensive coordination. The ship doesn't just fight, it manages the battle. Supporters describe it as a quarterback. It assigns targets across destroyers, submarines, unmanned surface vessels, and aerial drones. Instead of concentrating risk, it distributes combat capability across the entire fleet. The battleship does not replace smaller ships, it amplifies them. There is also a psychological dimension. One critics often dismiss, but naval history does not. The Golden Fleet is deliberately modeled after the philosophy of the Great White Fleet. The objective is visibility. When a Defiant class battleship enters a foreign port, it is meant to be seen, to signal permanence, capability, intent. Supporters argue deterrence still works, and that deterrence, when properly managed, prevents wars rather than invites them. But none of this matters if the ships can't be built. This is where the final criticism lands. Each hull could cost up to $15 billion. New ship classes typically require a decade or more to reach operational status. The proposed timeline, two and a half years, is viewed by many experts as deeply optimistic. To make it possible, the Navy is betting on robotic shipyards, large-scale 3D printing, modular construction, and aggressive domestic manufacturing reform. An additional $29.2 billion has already been signaled to jumpstart the program. 
Supporters argue U.S. naval technology remains 15 years ahead of any competitor. Critics counter that advanced designs are meaningless if production fails. And that brings the debate full circle. The Defiant-class battleship is either a bold adaptation to modern warfare or a high-risk gamble built on optimistic assumptions. It is either a platform designed to deter conflict before it begins or the most expensive surface target ever put to sea. One thing is certain. If the USS Defiant sails, it will redefine how navies think about power, cost, and survival at sea. Whether that redefinition proves brilliant or disastrous will only be answered on the ocean.